Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Guys, my name is Prince Dyke. This is the Prince of Investing. I'm glad to be with you guys. Uh, for all the people that are tuning in, that are catching playback over the uh, podcast, YouTube, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So today's video, um, our podcast, and however you're catching this, the playback, all the people that's catching this live um, through uh, thinktechhawaii.com, today's video is going to be about, as you can see in the description box, we're going to talk about Roth IRAs versus traditional Roth IRAs. But first, we're going to get into what we're going to talk about. The first thing being is, the, re the first thing is we're going to talk about what are Roths, what are traditional IRAs, what are 401ks, 413, uh, 42, whatever the case, whatever um, certified plan you may have that's been offered through your employer, what are they, what are the advantages and the disadvantages of each? Now, the reason why I say this, the reason why I bring up this topic is I get a lot of people that write me and say, hey, you know, my job is offering me a 401k. Uh, I got a Roth IRA. What should I do with it? I have a traditional or whatever the case may be. And we must keep in mind that even though we live in one of the richest countries in the world, more than 50% of the Americans don't invest. Why is that? The biggest reason that we don't know. Most of us don't know. If you was like me, like myself, when I got my first real job, that offered 401k, it was, I was 18 years old, United States military. And all they said was, hey, um, you want a 401k? And this is our 401k plan. And I didn't know what a 401k was. I never heard of a 401k. I never heard of a retirement plan. But they said, hey, this is for your retirement. And I'm like, well, I thought if I worked here for 20 years, that would be my retirement. They're like, no, this is a place you can put money and invest it, put it to the side. I knew nothing about it, but I, it sounded good. So I signed up, put a little bit of my money there, and that was it. And along the way, people will say, hey, you put money in your 401k? I'll say yes, and they'll be like, great. Little did I know, I did that for about six or seven years, you know, putting large amounts of money compared to my pay. You know, I spent large amounts of money there to, you know, thinking I'm doing the right thing. Little did I know, I didn't know that inside of the 401k, there were options that there was a traditional, that there was a Roth, that there was these different types of funds. What did these funds mean? You know, I had no grasp of it. So this whole time, I essentially was putting my money into a savings account and didn't even know it, didn't even realize. A savings account is great when 2008 happens, when we have an economical downturn, but it's not so great when we're in a economical boom or economical uptick, right? like we have been for the last eight years. So I'm making this episode, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what are they, um, all these other great things like that. So stay tuned. So the first thing being a 401k plan. A 401k plan is a retirement plan. Remember the days of, hey, you go work at Ford, you work there for 30 years, the stories of your grandpa or your great-grandpa, hey, I work at Ford, I worked there for like 30, 40 years, and now I have a pension, I work for the city or the state, Great, th I was a school teacher for 20, 30, 40 years, and now I get a pension, but now this generation and the future generation, those days are kind of slimming away. Now people are jumping from job to job. They're working somewhere for five years. They're working somewhere else for six years. They're working somewhere else for seven years, all of the stuff like that. So one of the ways that the government, um, I, I, I can't remember the senator's name. He was a senator, and his last name was Roth or something like that. It had Roth in it. So he created uh, the 401k, the Roth IRA plan. To or the, He created the Roth, but the 401k K plan was built by the government to be a retirement vehicle to help people uh, be able to, to give them tax advantages to be able to invest to be able to retire. Now, what's the advantage of a 401k over a regular you know, going out here starting an E-Trade account, two-year marriage trade account, having a broker or whatever the case may be. One of the big differences is the tax advantages. The tax advantages that you have inside of your 401k plan is pretty much like a, a, a tax, a quote-unquote a tax shelter, where depending on what type you have, it can, it can um, differentiate. So now, 
inside of a 401k plan, you have two tax options, a Roth IRA or traditional Roth, uh, or traditional IRA. Now, the difference is a Roth IRA means you pay your taxes now. You pay the tax, so for prime example, if you make $400 a month, you pay your 10% in taxes, let's say if it was $40, you pay it now, you invest the rest, right? Versus with a traditional Roth IRA, you don't pay the taxes now, you pay the taxes later. So when you get ready to pull out on your 401k, usually it's about 59 and a half or whatever the case, when you can take out on the tax free and uh, what's, the, what's the thing, the, the, the early deduction, the early the early penal, the early penalization. I'm having a little tongue twist today, but it's pretty much they charge you 10 percent if you pull out before you 59 and a half. Now the thing about this, um, you know, they add on a 10 percent penalty plus taxes or whatever. The thing about that was good about a 401k is inside of it. Now we already spoke. You got a 401k. You got the Roth IRA, and then you have a traditional. Traditional is pre-tax. Um, you, you know, you're not paying any taxes on it until later. And the Roth IRA, you're paying taxes on it now. Now, which one you should choose, that's up to you. Um, let me give you the advantages and disadvantages of both before I break down even further into that. With a Roth IRA, if you pay your taxes now, let's say if you only make $30,000 a year. Let's say if you're a military guy or, you know, you are, you have a regular, you're a secretary. You only make $20,000, $30,000 a year and you're paying taxes in that, in that tax bracket. Then let's say when you turn 40, you jump into a higher tax bracket. By the time you turn 59 and a half or 60, you may be making 150, $160,000 a year, and we don't know what taxes are, will be in the future. And let's say if you're not in a higher tax bracket, you don't have to worry about paying taxes at your 59 and a half tax bracket because you paid it along the way when you was in those lower tax brackets. Because most of us, when we're in our 20s, our 30s, our 40s, we usually have kids. We usually have dependents. But most of the time when we're in 59 or 60 in retirement years, our kids are long gone, or at least they're not on our taxes anymore. So with that being said, um, that's one of the ways that some people may look at it as an advantage to say, hey, I pay taxes now in a low tax bracket. Then when I get older, you know, I'm in a, now that I'm you know, 59, I'm making more money, I'm in a higher tax bracket. And we don't know what taxes will be in the future, but hey, I got away with paying taxes in the lower tax bracket instead of now I'm making $150,000 a year, 200, whatever you're making, millions of dollars, whatever the case may be. Um, I don't have to pay taxes on that tax bracket with this particular money because I don't have to pay at that income level because I paid it along the way. So that's one of the, um, the pros of that. Now, the difference, the, one of the cons to that is something that the traditional offers. By you paying the government those tax dollars, you could be leaving that money inside of your account and gaining compounded interest off of the government's dollar. For example, let's say if I, pay, I got paid $400, and instead of paying the government 40 bucks in taxes, I keep the 40 bucks, put it inside of my account, let that grow, compounding interest. If you listen to my last week podcast, you know the top two elements of investing is compound interest and time. So with retirement, you're waiting maybe 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So that's time. Where's the compounding interest? As your account is compounding, the more money that you have that's turning over is compounding, compound. It's like the snowball. You know, snowballs start hitting and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it gets down the hill. So the more snow that you put in it at the beginning, the bigger the ball becomes at the end, right? So instead of paying the government taxes, you know, along the way, you are keeping that those tax dollars there and letting that snowball get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's one of the disadvantages of the Roth IRA that you won't have because you're paying your taxes up front. So those are the top two things. You know, these are quick things I'm giving you between a Roth IRA and things like that. Um, now the next one is traditional. One of the big advantages traditional has is one, you're not paying the tax on it now. The money that you contribute to it, you get to uh, write that off against your taxes, or, uh, against your income, which lowers your tax exposure. So it is a tax vehicle. And also what I just spoke spoke about, instead of paying your money to the government, 
you're leaving it inside of your, your traditional Roth IRA, and you're making your you're making uh, compound interest along with those pre-tax dollars that haven't been taxed yet. The disadvantage is now that you got this big snowball at the end, when it's time to pull out, the government is going to say, "Hey, I remember you. Let me have my piece out of this, right?" So that's one of the things um, between a Roth and a traditional. Now we're going to break it down even further. Okay, what is a Roth? Someone wrote me a couple weeks ago and said, hey, I got a Roth IRA. I'm investing with it. I got one through E-Trade. I got one through a broker. I got a, you know, is that a good thing? I put this much money in it. And I say, okay, great. You put money into your Roth IRA, but where's that money going? And people say, um, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's invested. Invested into what? The Roth IRA is just a shield. It's just, I mean, the 401k is just a shield. What's inside of it? Now, according to federal law, every company must offer you an aggressive plan, a conservative plan, and a moderate plan. Conservative means that, hey, I want to be conservative with my money or whatever the case may be. Moderate is, hey, I kind of want to take a little risk, and aggressive means I want to be, want to be aggressive. Most people, they're going to depend on depending on your age. If you were 19, 20s, and 30s, the people are going to tell you to be more aggressive. You know, even kind of when you're in your 40s, they're going to say when you're young, be aggressive, take all the risks, just like we do in life. And then as you get older, you uh, you take um, you, you become conservative, right? Because so you don't want to take you know when you when you're older, it's projected that you'll be using that money, and you don't want to say hell. Oh, um, now that we're in trade wars, the stock market crashed. Now that the stock market has crashed, um, and, you know, that's not a good deal if you need your money. But that's a pretty good deal for if you're young and investing. Like me, for example, if the stock market was to crash tomorrow, that's great for me. And that's great for the people that listen and study. That's great for investors, right? But not so great if you are my dad's age, which is 72 years old, and you're living off your retirement. You don't got time for that, right? You've already got enough of the issues. So those are the two. Uh, um, that's one of the good things about – well, not one of the good things, but that's one of the, um, the things about people say, hey, what's, what are you investing in, being aggressive, moderate, and whatever the case may be. Most of the case, most of the time, yes, you're going to get these targeted funds. If you haven't watched my YouTube channel, go back and watch one of my most popular – well, the most popular video that I uploaded. I probably, I probably made 500 videos over the last – uh, probably more than that, but at least on YouTube, I've uploaded over 500 videos over the last five years. And the number one video is Andy Sorry when he sat down with Warren Buffett. And when he sat down with Warren, you know, Andy Sorry is the chief editor of Yahoo Finance. You have seen him here on Think Tech Hawaii. You've seen him, you've seen him on the Investor Show. He uh, was one of the first guests that came onto the show, too. But when, when he sat down with Buffett, he asked Buffett, and it's recorded, uh, he, he asked Buffett, hey, what do you think of these target date funds? Do you think they add value? And one of the, great, the greatest investors of our time said, no, I don't think they add value. Why don't he think they add value? He don't think they add value because he explained that, hey, you know, I could have turned $114 to $400,000 by investing to the S&P 500. And pretty much what he's stating is that the target funds are usually, oh, target 2040, target 2030, target 2060, target 2050. And what these things are for is they say, hey, you know what? I don't know what I want to invest in, so I plan on retiring in um, 2050. And what this target date this target date does is it's a, it sets up your retirement to be aggressive when it's, 20, it's, it's uh, 2018 right now. But as it gets closer to that target date, it's going to become more conservative. That's all it really does. Right now, it's very aggressive, then it's going to become very conservative. How aggressive is it? It, 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 you know, it depends. It depends on the company that's providing it. I've seen some that I, that was considered aggressive that wasn't too aggressive in my eyes, and I've seen some that was very aggressive, right? And aggressive means pretty much the more money they put in stocks, simple way. How much money they put in the stocks versus how much money they put into bonds and how much money they put into CDs and savings accounts. Because we got to think about it. Let's walk through that. The most safest investment right now is your checking account. You know, you're not going to make anything, not going to lose anything. Above that is your savings account. Above that is your uh, CD, not, not your CD, but your money markets. 
Above that is your CDs. Above that, you know, you have – that's when you get into an investing world with, you know, um, mutual funds. Well, bonds before that, bonds, then you have your mutual funds, then you have stocks and things like that. That's in the investing world. But, of course, you have other things like real estate, you have other branches, options, and stuff like that. But just general consensus is that stocks is considered to be the most riskiest. And the, the more you pick of stocks, the more riskier you become. For prime example, look at General Electric. General Electric was one of the first, was, was one of the original in the Dow Jones. And as of a couple months ago, it's now gone. This was a staple in the stock market. You know, over 100 and something, 110 years that it spent on the Dow Jones. And, you know, now it's gone away because of its bad performance and got replaced by Walgreens. So when you pick an individual company, you make your investment portfolio a little bit more uh, a little bit more riskier because I don't have a crystal ball. And if you do have a crystal ball, especially when it comes to investing, please send it to me so I can take a look at a couple of things myself. But that's besides the point. Inside of your Roth IRA, please take a look at it. And the thing is, really, why I I notion Mr. Buffett and what he was saying about the S and P 500 is. Look inside of your portfolio and see what matches the S&P 500. And that itself, you have, a, you, you know, you have the possibility to be able to invest into the American economy. Because when you get the target date funds, you get the Mr. Aggressive and all this stuff like that, one of the simplest and easiest ways to invest is to invest into the benchmark of finance. You know, over the last 100 years, it has done – but how much, uh, I think the average is 10% without counting for inflation. So that's a nice compounding way, simple way to start investing. Hey, what is the broad-based index of stocks, especially if you're 19 or 20 years old? So when you go to your employer and your employer says, hey, we have a 401K plan, we have a what you call it plan, and you start to put money inside of it, start to see where your money is going inside of your uh, portfolio. Hey, you know, where's it going? It's great that I'm investing into it, but look a little bit deeper inside of it. Because people say, hey, um, I have a 401k, and okay, great. What are you investing in? I don't know. I, do, I contribute this much. That's great that you're contributing. Because when it comes down to investing, it's good if you're doing it, but it's always good. It's always uh, great, and it's always better. So it's always good, great, better. Even if you're in a lower end, at least the fact that you're investing, hey, you're doing something, but you can make it good or you can make it better. Look inside of that particular 401k. Sit down, sit down with a professional. Who's a professional? Sit down with people in the financial industry, maybe a accredited financial counselor, um, a certified financial planner, an investment advisor representative, people with the three-letter agency behind their names, right? Not saying that other people, um, you know, who don't have those credentials, can't do it, but at least when you have a three-letter agency behind your name, you're governed to act with under your governed, and you are monitored by a certain body, like the SEC or FINRA. You know, they're watching, you know, you have certain guidelines and things like that. It's like a driver's license. Just because you got a driver's license don't mean you can drive, but it does mean you know the rules of the road, or you should. You have a basic understanding of the rules of the road. So by having those credentials, you have a rules of the road, and that by you having a driver's license, the cops can pull you over and give you a speeding ticket because because you have demonstrated you know the rules of the road and that you know better. Every doctor is not good just because they have a license, but they are governed by someone. So those are people you should start out with. But if you got a 401k or if you have a Roth IRA, you know, you have tax advantages. You can open up a Roth. Even if you don't have a job, hey, I don't have a job, but I want to get these tax advantages, you can go to an E-Trade or TD Ameritrade or Scott Trade or whatever and start your Roth IRA. And once you are inside of that Roth IRA, you can, you know, you can tr contribute money. And you can – people buy houses with Roth IRA, but you only can contribute $5,500 is the minimum if you're under the age of 55. If you're over 55, I think it goes to 6500 you know, for, for catch-up. You can, it's like a little catch-up cause there. But you can have a Roth IRA. You can have, a, you can have one at your job and a private one. But in that private one, you only can put so much money in it. But the one at your job, you, if you're in a qualified, uh, a qualified retirement plan, you can put up to $18,000 into your retirement plan. But 
if you know if you're not in the qualified plan, plan you go to start one, or if you you are you're independent, you're self-employed, you can start up a SEP IRA. Those are good for you too. Start up a SEP IRA, and all those other good things. All right. Those are good ways for you to start investing, and those are ways inside of your 401k. You know what a Roth is. You know the uh, traditional is. But notice when you put money in those, ask where is my money being invested. You know the Roth IRA is just a house, but what's in it? Are you investing into an aggressive fund, a moderate fund? Please look at that. I wish someone would have told me I would have been way more aggressive then than I am now. You know, some places have, ooh, the C fund, and the F fund, the G fund, whatever the names may be. Get the one that closely monitors the S&P 500. If you look at anything else, I was taking a class, and they said, hey, how do you know, you say I'm going to buy a mutual fund or any type of an investment vehicle. I said, how would you know if that investment is doing good or bad? They said, um, well, you know, if it gets a good return, great, right? But if I told you I got you 15% last year, would you think that was great? Most people said, yeah, I would think that was awesome. I said, okay. But what if I told you the stock market had gotten 20% last year? Now that 15% doesn't look great. The S&P 500 is the benchmark. So we're looking at any investment, compare it to the S&P 500. How has this mutual fund, this stock, this whatever I'm doing, compared to the S&P 500 over the last, at least the last 10 years? And even when you compare it, doesn't mean, hey, whoa, this thing really beat the S&P 500. Doesn't mean it's going to do it for the next 10 years. Because in investing, the rearview mirror always looks clear. The windshield, but the windshield is always foggy. So just because, oh, wow, this mutual fund beat the S&P 500 over the last 10 years. Will it do it for the next 10 years? So always compare to that. And if something is not beating the S&P 500, you should invest into the S&P 500, right? For prime example, if my portfolio returns 5% this year, but the S&P 500 did 10%, I think I may I underperform. If the S&P 500 did 10%, but my portfolio did 20%, that means, you know, I outperform the S&P 500. More than 90-something percent of professional investors won't outperform the S&P 500. But I hope that gives you more clarity on, on your uh, Roth IRA. We discussed what, a, what was it, even a 401, 401k, uh, I can't even think of the other one, 42, 423, Bravo, or whatever, this one the school teachers get. Uh, what are certified plans? What's the difference between them? What's the difference between a, a traditional and a Roth? Some pros and cons ways to look inside of it, um, ways to get some help, and all of the good stuff like that. But with that being said, it is my time again to get out of here, and I'll see you guys later. But as always, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, the share button, um, the bell icon to get uh, uploads for YouTube. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, here on Think Tech Hawaii, and all of the great stuff like that. You listen, you listen to the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. But until the next video, podcast, cartoon, book, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the world, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.